Hello again, everyone, and welcome back. In today's video, we're going to cover the client config file for OpenSSH. And this is very useful because if you have a bunch of servers that you connect to regularly, like I do, then the config file can be a great way to simplify these connections and actually help you to remember them. I mean, can you remember the IP addresses and the uh, fully qualified domain names of every single server that you connect to? I doubt it because as administrators, We'll often connect to tens or hundreds or maybe even thousands of servers. And having a config file that can help us remember and simplify these connections is definitely a great way to go. Speaking of a bunch of Linux servers, definitely check out Linode, the sponsor for today's video. You could use their service to set up your very own cloud Linux server with $100 in free credit. If you use the URL that's on the screen right now, that'll start your new account and give you access to their platform. Using Linode's platform, you can set up your very own Linux servers. Like I mentioned, they have all kinds of distributions there. You can set up a WordPress site, a Minecraft server, check out their Kubernetes platform. And they recently enabled auto-scaling as well, which is a great feature. It could do horizontal auto-scaling, which means new servers can come online as your load increases. So definitely check out Linode. I really appreciate them sponsoring today's video. They are awesome. Now, before we get started and create our very own client config file for OpenSSH, I want to point you guys to the existence of a very special video that I've done. And that video goes over OpenSSH in great detail. I'll leave a card for that video right about here. And definitely check out that video if you want to learn more about OpenSSH, especially if you have no idea what I'm talking about, then that video will teach you all the things about OpenSSH. Now, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and create our very own client config file for OpenSSH. All right, so here on my laptop, I have a terminal window open and I'm ready to go. For this video, I've set up three servers for three hypothetical companies. The scenario is that we're a Linux administrator and we have multiple accounts to manage. And the three hypothetical companies that I've created servers for include Acme, Shinra, and Skynet. Bonus points if you know the fandoms that the latter two are from, let me know in the comments down below. Anyway, as you probably already know, Connecting to a server via SSH is pretty straightforward. We just type SSH, and then the username, at, and then the fully qualified domain name or IP address. In this case, the fully qualified domain name for Acme is acme.learnlinux.cloud. So when I press enter, it's going to first make sure that I actually want to connect to this server. The SSH client is showing this message because I've never connected to this particular server before. So what I'll do is I'll just type yes to confirm that I really want to connect to this server, and then I'll press enter. And then I'll type in the password, and I'm in. And I'm sure what you've seen so far is nothing new for many of you, because you probably already know how to use SSH to connect to a one-off server, but things are going to get a little bit more interesting as we connect to the other two servers. So I'll just hold control and press D to disconnect from this one. And let's connect to the second one. So for that, I'm going to run SSH yet again, but this time the username of J is not on that server. Instead, the username for Skynet is admin. So I'm going to connect to the server skynet.learnlinux.cloud as the user admin. So I'll press enter. Same thing again here, I'll say yes. And then I'll type in the password. And now I'm in. Now what's unique about Skynet is that the username that I'm using for the SSH connection is not my own. I used admin and the username here on my laptop is J. So I'll disconnect. And as you can see, I'm logged in as J. And I didn't even need to run that command because right here, it shows the username at the beginning of the prompt. Now the reason why I'm mentioning this is because if I was to SSH into the original server, the first one, Acme, if you recall, the command was SSH, and then my username of J, at, and then acme.learnlinux.cloud. Now the thing is, as you probably already know, I can take off the username here, 
because if I don't include a username at all, then the SSH client is going to assume that the username on the target is the same as my local username, and since they are a match, I actually don't have to type my name. I could simplify it down to SSH and then the fully qualified domain name. So I left off the username. And that's one less thing that I have to type, so that's pretty cool. So I'll type in the password. And now I'm in. Now, if I was to try that same thing on the second server, and I'll leave off the username, of course this won't work. Press enter, I'll type in my password. And of course, it's failing, and it's probably obvious why it's failing. The username of J does not exist on the target server. I should have used admin. So I'm not able to simplify the command down to just the fully qualified domain name when I go to connect to it, because the username is not the same on the target. And now when I connect to the third server, things get even more interesting. Check this out. I'll use SSH, and I'll use dash P, that stands for port, port 2222. And then the username on that server is root, and the fully qualified domain name is shinra.learnlinux.cloud. So I'll press enter. I'll type in the magic password. And now I'm in. So with the command that we've just run, we're using SSH as normal. By default, if you don't tell the SSH client that the target is using a different port, it's going to assume the default of port 22. That's the default port for all the SSH servers out there. By changing the port number, you're making it a little bit harder for people to guess how to get into your server. It's not really going to slow them down all that much, but it's an easy change to make, and it looks like Shinra decided to run their SSH server on port 2222, which is why I needed to give it that option. Again, without that option, the SSH client is going to assume that I want to use the default of port 22. And that's why that worked. So at this point, we have three different servers, and each one needs different parameters for me to connect to them. And that could get a little confusing to try to remember those details. I mean, yeah, I could include some of those details in documentation or something like that, but there has to be a better way. And of course, there is. If we create a config file for the local SSH client, we can actually simplify most, if not all, of the parameters that we might use to connect to a server. Now, if I list the storage for the .ssh directory in my home directory, I only have one file in there, known hosts. When it asked me at the beginning, are you sure you want to connect to the server, the reason why it knew that I hadn't connected to that server before is because there wasn't an entry in the known host file that had the fingerprint of that server, but after I connect for the first time, it's going to save that fingerprint. That's what the known host file is for. Again, check out the SSH video that I've done if you want more information on that. But also inside this folder, we could include a config file for OpenSSH. It's not there by default, but if there is a config file there named config, then the SSH client will attempt to use it. So let's go ahead and create the config file. So what I'm going to do is just use nano. It doesn't matter which text editor you happen to use. And what we'll do is we'll save it in our .ssh directory under the name of config. And here it is. So on the very first line, what I'm going to do is type the word host with a capital H. And for the host, I'm going to call it just simply Acme. On the next line, I'm going to press space twice. It really doesn't matter. You could do tab or four spaces, whatever you want to do. But I just want some indentation here to separate the options from the name of the host. And this option here, I'm going to call it host name. And what I'll set the host name to is acme.learnlinux.cloud, just like that. Now, if you don't have a fully qualified domain name like I do, then what you could do instead is just include the IP address here for the host name parameter instead, and that works just fine. You don't have to have a fully qualified domain name, but if you do, it makes it that much easier. I'll change it to the IP address here in a moment, but let's go ahead and save the file. In the case of nano, that's Control and then O to bring up the save dialog. I'll press Enter, and then Control X to exit out. So now let's go ahead and connect to that Acme server yet again. But this time, I'm going to type SSH and then Acme. I'm going to simplify it down to just that. I'll press Enter. I just typed in the password. I'll press Enter again. And here we are. We're connected to the server. That's pretty cool. Control D to log out. 
And as you can see, I used simply SSH and then Acme to connect to that server. Now let's take another look at that file and change it up a little bit to help you guys understand more about how this file works in case you don't already. So I'll just use nano. I'm going to open up that same file yet again. And here it is. And what I'm going to do is change the name. Just randomly, I'll just call it potato. I don't know why, maybe I'm just hungry. And then for the host name, what I'm going to do is change that to its IP address. So now I changed the name of the host and I included the IP address for Acme as well instead of the fully qualified domain name. So I'll go ahead and save and close the file. And then we'll type SSH and then potato. Now notice that even though I type potato, it's showing the IP address here, which is pretty cool. And now I'm in. Now as you can see right here, the host name for the server that I just connected to is Acme. So the takeaway here is that it really doesn't matter what you call the host. It doesn't have to match the actual name of the server. This is not actually for the server, this is for you. This line right here that says host is specifically for you to create a nickname for the server, something to refer to it by. You could type whatever you want. It really doesn't matter. What actually matters is that the host name is correct because that's the part that actually points the client to the proper server. You could use the IP address right here as I have it, or like I did earlier, you can include the fully qualified domain name as well, and that works just fine. Now let's go ahead and take this to another level and add some more configuration to this file. I'm going to close it for now. So this is the command right here that we use to connect to the Skynet server. As you can see, it's using a different username, a username of admin instead of my local username of J. So what I want to do is add this server to the config file as well. So that way I don't have to remember which username I'm supposed to be using. I want to basically set that ahead of time in the config file. So let's bring that back up. And we'll go all the way to the very end of the file. And then I'll add a line break here to separate the first host section from the second one that I'm about to create. And I'll change this back to Acme so that way things don't get confusing. But anyway, the second server is Skynet. And now for the host name, I'll type the fully qualified domain name for this one. And there it is. But what I'm going to do now is add another configuration option. And that is going to be user with a capital U. And then I'm going to set the username to admin. So let's save the file. And then we can simply run SSH and then Skynet. Notice that I didn't type the fully qualified domain name. And my local username of J doesn't exist on that server. I should have typed admin at and then the fully qualified domain name, but I didn't type that either. Let's see what happens. So I typed in the password, and now I'm in. And the SSH config file allowed me to simplify the connection to this server quite a bit because I don't have to type the fully qualified domain name, and I don't have to type the username either. So even then, I'm able to simplify this down to just SSH and Skynet, which is a lot easier for me to remember. So what I'm going to do now is bring up the command that we use to connect to Shinra. And here it is. Not only do we have a different username with this one, we also have a different port number as well. So there's a little bit more going on with this one. So let's go ahead and just add this to the config file as well and see how we could simplify this connection. And here we have our SSH client config file. Then I'll add a line break. We'll add Shinra to our config file. Then for the host name, that's going to be shinra.learnlinux.cloud. The user is going to be root this time around. And then the new option that I'm going to add is port with a capital P. I'm going to set that to 2222. So now I no longer have to remember the username or the port for this connection, and this config file will allow me to refer to it simply as Shinra, and all of these options are going to apply. 
And the way that this is actually working is if you use the SSH command to connect to a server, it's first going to check if you have a config file or not. If it does find one, it'll use it. And if there's a match to what you're typing as the target server that matches in this file right here, it's going to apply the parameters. So if I was to type something else like Shinra2 or something like that, then this will not match because that's not the same server name. Now, as an aside, you could also do something like this and put a star at the end of it. That way, if you have servers like Shinra1, Shinra2, and so on, it'll match all of them. But if you don't include an asterisk, then it's going to expect an exact match, which is why if I typed Shinra2, it wouldn't match here, but if I type Shinra, then it will. Anyway, let's go ahead and see it in action. We'll save the file, and then I'll type SSH, and then Shinra, just like that. And I'm in. I didn't need to remember the username or the port number. I put all of those things in the config file, and now I can simplify that connection down to just two keywords, and I'm good to go. And that's all there is to it. There's actually more parameters that you can include in your config file that I'm going to leave out of this particular video, because I'm going to be doing another video that's going to build on this one. So I feel like for now, that's probably good enough. As you can see, using an SSH config file greatly simplifies your connections. It can make it a lot easier for you to remember the parameters for all of your servers because, while well, you don't have to remember them. You can just include all the parameters in the config file, and then at that point, it makes everything a lot easier. If you like this video, please click that like button. I would really appreciate that. And I would also appreciate it if you subscribe to this channel because I have some awesome content coming very soon. Thank you so much for watching.